This is a general social survey. Uh, the Washington Post reported on this most recently as of 2018. So young men driving the decline in sex, share of men and women between ages 18 and 30 reporting no sex in the past year. So 28% of men versus 18% of women. I think this graph would essentially prove that there are more women engaging in casual sex than there are men. There's also something from Pew Research. Uh, Eric, if you can look in the infographics tab, there's Pew Men More Single and Pew Men More Single 2. Uh, and this is more recent than that 2018 GSS survey that the Washington Post reported on. Eric, can you let me know when you have those pulled up. There should be two of them. Was that last study single women? Is it single men and women or is it both? Uh, which one? The, the one you just pulled up. Was it single? Is that accounting for people in relationships or just single men and women? Well, it's the share of men and women between ages 18 and 30 reporting no sex in the past year. Yeah, so, so some of them are in relationships. I'm just saying. Well, it's, I'm not it's sure like how, that, a, how is that relevant to the statistic. I'm just trying to. Because understand. there's a difference between having casual sex and being in a monogamous relationship, which is the point that you were making. Okay, pull. Hold on, uh, Eric. Can you pull up the initial graph so we can the the initial one? Oh, did you X out of it? Uh, so it it doesn't really differentiate, but I mean, I I suppose some of these people are in sexless relationships, but it, it's talking about reporting no sex in the past year. So I'm trying to understand but, where the relation, whether if they're in a rela uh, relationship or not, has any bearing on this specific infographic. Because you, the point that you were making was that women are, this is what you said, that women are more promiscuous than men. So you're showing whether or not they've had those encounters, but you're not saying whether or not they're in a relationship or single, and maybe your next statistic talks about single ones, but I'm just saying specifically for that one. So I'm just, you're, you're, the case that you were making was that women are more promiscuous than men, and I want to know the statistics specifically on how single women are more promiscuous. I think but, this but is- the graph that the graph just showed that there are a greater proportion of women who have reported having sex than men. Yeah, but promiscuity. But that could be women yeah. in relationships. Exactly. The but yeah. so but typically be. in a relationship, you've paired off one to one. Therefore, if, there, if there's, more, there's a larger proportion of women who are, are engaging, it's, it's plausible that there are, well, I think this is actually the case, that there's women who think they're in relationships with a guy when really that guy has multiple women. But, but that would suggest that, I mean, well, in any case, let's see the other infographic. D you did pull up both of them, right? Okay, the share of single men in the US who are looking for dates or relationship has declined since 2019. Um, okay, so that shows that, wait, the share of single, uh, percent, of, percent of single US adults who say they are looking for committed romantic relationship and or casual dates. So single men, single women, 61%, this is in 2019. Uh, I think the other one's actually more important, but so single men, 50% versus single women, 30. I think it's the other one that's more relevant, uh, the number two. Okay, three in 10 Americans report being single, but this varies by age, and this next one's important, by gender. So three in 10 Americans report being single. Between the ages of 18 to 29, 63% of men are reporting being single. Oh, fuck. Alvin okay. Singh donated $100. Stay safe, even if those stats may be true. That does not help address the declining marriage rates. Men shouldn't be getting married just to prove a point that they won't get depression or be a criminal, especially when you consider the financial risks. Yo, Alvin, Sam, good to see you in the chat. Thank you, man. Um, yeah, I will say there's a lot of misinformation about divorce rates in the U.S. A lot of people will repeat this trope that 50% of marriages in, in, in the U.S. end in divorce. It's actually around 45%. And then if you look even deeper at that, if you look at first time, so if you a man and a woman who are both getting married for the first time, that national divorce rate average is actually 35%. Because if people are getting married 
let's say you're on your second marriage, your divorce rate goes up from 44 on average, sorry, from 35 on average up to 63. And then if it's your third marriage, your divorce rate goes up to around 70 or 71%. So this 44% this national average stat is getting sort of inflated by people that are on their second or third divorce, or people that are, sorry, they're getting divorced super quickly and sort of flippantly. Um, and then it's sort of different by various socioeconomic or racial demographics. If you look at two, uh, like my wife and I are both white. We both got married for the first time. We're not on our second marriage or second divorce. Um, our national average divorce rate is 13%. So suddenly you start sort of looking at the nuance of these divorce rates and it's like, well, it's actually maybe not as bad as you think it is. We all are thinking 50%. It's actually for my demographic, it's 13%. It's not as bad as you've sort of been ingrained to think it is because these numbers are, like I said, they're sort of stat padded by people that are serially getting divorced over and over and over again. I think there's a certain amount of um, anti-marriage uh, and anti-family propaganda in the country sort of trying to compel you guys from not getting married, but what's that? Um, are you the propagandist? I, I am, You're the propagandist. I'm the uh, anti-marriage propaganda arm, propaganda yeah. minister. Um, in any case, um, let, let's, uh, Alvin, Sam, thank you very much for your uh, two uh, TTSs there. Really appreciate your support. Good to see you in the chat, man. Let's pull back up that stat I was kind of getting to. So the big one is gender here. Three in 10 Americans report being single, and that, that's just taking everybody into account. Mm -hmm. But it varies by age and gender. If you look at ages 18 to 29, if you go uh, to about the fourth grouping down, it says men ages 18 to 29 are reporting being uh, 63 percent are reporting being single in that same age cohort for women just below it ages 18 to 29 only 34 percent are reporting being single so what's going on there um that that's very shocking that in that their exact same age cohort you have women who are not single but you have a, a large swath of men who who are so it could be explained by for example perhaps um you know, women might be dating uh, an ader, older age demographic. Women, generally speaking, they, they, it skews, I think, on average, maybe two, three years older than them, typically, at least for marriage. Um, but uh, it would suggest to me that you have a not minimal cohort of women who are dating a small pool of men. I think you've seen a lot of data come out of Tinder or only, uh, what's it called? Uh, not OnlyFans, OkCupid, okay, this dating site, where it sort of highlights this, this is to your point, this sort of sexually hypergamous situation where it's like the top, this is your giga chad, your eight out of 10, nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 guys that are having free range in having sex with <clears throat> women from, men are not so picky sexually, right? A 10 right. out of 10 guy will sometimes be in the mood to have sex with a 5 out of 10 girl. Sure. Yeah, whatever. It's a bad day, whatever. And so, yeah, you're having the top Giga Chad type of guys that are sort of having free reign amongst all of the girls. And then that means that 70 or 80 percent of men are not having access to these women. I, th I think what, what's happening is, is you have like, you have some hyper sexual, hyper promiscuous men at the very yeah. top. And then you have some like mid m medium tier, uh, and that's a small percentage of men that are like hyper promiscuous where they'll like, you know, you'll have some women like that too. Then you'll have a higher proportion of women who are like, let's say medium levels of promiscuity. And then you'll have like a huge swath of men that are basically incapable of engaging in hookup culture or promiscuity simply by virtue, simply out of necessity. They, they can't engage in hookup culture or promiscuity because they just don't have the looks or the charisma or you know whatever yeah. whatever it may be, and I just the last thing I'd point out, um, if it if it was the case that there's equal uh, levels of promiscuity between men and women, how would you then explain, for example, the incel phenomenon, which doesn't exist in women? What's the incel phenomenon? Are you are you familiar with incel? Yes. Oh, in, incel. So that stands for involuntarily celibate. So basically, men who. Uh, sometimes they uh, they Can't add like an uh, like how a uh, period of time for it, but basically men who are involuntarily celibate, dis despite their want and desire to have a sexual relationship with a girl, they're just in, either they're unattractive or they they are severely lacking on some social front or you know whatever it may be, they cannot get sex. I think what's more sad about this conversation is that we're living in an era where promiscuity, multiple partners engaging in casual sex is somehow glorified over having a monogamous relationship. So I don't know about 
the women here, I feel like we've kind of been on this tangent for a little bit, but I, I'm genuinely curious, like, do you, do each of you want to find a life partner to find somebody that you can be vulnerable with, to give your love to, to mutually take care of each other? Well, I have a question for you. Yes. Do you think monogamy is like the right way, like the only way it should be? Like, do you not think non-monogamous relationships are I think okay? I No, I don't think non-monogamous relationships are okay. And here's why. I think that in order to be fully vulnerable and to give yourself fully to into your relationship, let's put it that way, you ha- it has to be with one person. And when you're in a monogamous relationship, it opens room for full sacrifice, full love, full giving of the other person. And it allows us, especially as women, to be fully vulnerable with our man, knowing that he's going to take care of us and that we don't have to put up this you know, protection over our, our hearts and over you know, us as individuals and our spirits. So I think that, yes, relationships need to be monogamous. And again, if we look at the satisfaction and the fulfillment that people get out of relationships, statistically, partners feel happier and more fulfilled when they're in monogamous relationships. And I'm not saying that... Is that a fact? Are it's we just a fact, gonna, actually. It was done by the American Family Study, I believe. But, but are was, we just going to gloss over our back and forth on the, the promiscuity thing? You I never you proved did. that. So you brought up a statistic that did not talk about you brought up the sing- singleness, okay? But you said- Well, Maddie, you're taking sides. No, I will okay. say, okay, I so I do agree. Okay, I do agree that women are more promiscuous, but the stats that you brought up are 63% of men are single. That doesn't mean they're not promiscuous. Right. Can I say something Because only quick? single men can be promiscuous. I think that men would be as promiscuous as women if they could be, but they don't, yeah, they don't have exactly. the options. Okay, <laughs> regardless of whether we think it or not, based on the statistics that you showed, there's not sufficient evidence. So if you can bring me sufficient evidence that shows the statistics on single women and promiscuity, then we can have that conversation in, in more depth. Also, but the ones that you brought were not. Like, so... Hold on, but the sex frequency... Okay. Here, pull up the sex frequency one. Hold on, we'll come back to you. That doesn't account for women in relationships. It just says I don't see, but world study on men and women. It doesn't say anything about single, multiple partners or anything like that. And you're using specifically the word promiscuous. I mean, maybe I'm r. Hold on, keep it up. Maybe I'm r slurred here, but I'm 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 failing to see how your argument about whether you know with what this, does promiscuous with this, mean with this I have specific a, I have a graph perspective here okay so let's just say you're right right and women are more per- promiscuous and then what like men are better like what are we trying to argue here like are men okay. better or are I'll women better like i think that they're different and all of these all, everything we're talking about is so situational like this isn't like such a black and white issue like oh are, are women worse or are men worse like I feel that, like that's it's r- like pitting them against each other more instead of like talking about like ways that we can try and understand each other and like it's okay for some people to have faults in certain ways and others in other ways Thank but you okay, like, we this- can still we can like instead uh, of like arguing the point who's is, is worse that like, it's, like then it what it degrades like, women to say that women are more promiscuous than men. So it's yeah. not about who's better, but if you're gonna make a statement about that. How's it degrading women if, it, if it's promiscuous, just true? What does promiscuous mean? What is promiscuity? Promiscuity, promiscuity would uh, essentially, if you, I, my view of it would be if you engage in casual sex. Why does that yeah, have so to be degrading? Pro- promiscuity yeah. can the also way be, that hold he's on. You engage in casual sex, you have multiple partners, cool. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think yes. men are evolutionarily designed to be more promiscuous. Men men have a higher sex drive. That. Men have a higher sex drive. However, men are less able to, to act on said, like it, it's much harder for men to secure sex than it is for women to secure Why? sex. Is it because women can choose why? who they sleep with, where men just sleep with anyone? But, but no, it's why just, have it's, standards? Let me, okay, here. For men, why do you think it's harder for men? Women, women sleep with who they want, men sleep with who they can. Why do you think that is? Well, there's, there's a biological basis. I think women are, more, are the sexual selectors, for example. What's but but like also the, women are more selective. Women are more picky. Like they have standards. It's because for ninety nine point. Yes, maybe that, some women are like that because they're worried about being seen as 
promiscuous or getting judged so that leads them to be more picky for all of human history prior to advent of birth control in what the 1970s if a woman is having promiscuous sex there's a very high chance that she'll get pregnant and she'll be tied down to a man that she might not even love her body will go through enormous changes for nine months she'll have to take care of a baby she'll have to grow a fetus inside of her that's why i mean biologically a, female promiscuity is generally not a great thing that's why women have evolved like not not to want to do that they want to lock down one man that's how right. women ought to behave which is why generally if a woman is super promiscuous these well, days it's like sort of counter to her biological nature in general is just not a great thing Unbe i agree with but you totally. men and women work hand in so, hand yeah, to create like, promiscuity i think we so. can all agree yeah, like anyone going out and being extremely promiscuous is not a good thing shut it down 2024 no promiscuity shut it down <laughs> like get married it's have kids get married tie the knot and say other, no to promiscuity 2024 each other being honest with each other you know listening, hell yeah seeing yep. other people's perspectives you know, that's a good thing. Okay, True. but so I can answer your thing just, about like it's why- It's not are, a competition, y'all. Okay, it's but like- It's not the I men can, and women competition. I can answer your so. thing as to why we're having this discussion, and it stemmed from this idea that, well, men ought to be leaders, and, and it's, it's, you know, men are to, to blame for the current state of affairs between the sexes, and I mean, my, my view is- I didn't is, say that. Okay, my view is, is that- It sounds like you just wanna be blamed. I have no idea what you're talking about, but what's it? What I mean, is I can it explain like? Explain it to you. <laughs> I'm the one blame. I'm a radical man blamer. I blame men to the <laughs> ultimate degree. I'm a man hater. I hate them. But em. that's not men are either, always because responsible. we actually have a problem in our society <laughs> where we've and we were kind of talking about this before the show. Like we've created the society that nonstop bags on men and trashes on masculinity. When and I'm I'm not saying that all men are perfect. They're <laughs> Certainly not, and men have failed society in many ways, but this narrative that masculinity and men are toxic, they're bringing everything bad to society, uh, is just, first I, of all, just I certainly not that. true, and it hurts men and also hurts women. This narrative hurts women. Yeah, and like I feel like as a woman who experiences that, I want to try and be more understanding of what that's like for men and not just be like women are the only people who experience that like we both experience that in different ways and i feel like sometimes women struggle with that gets highlighted more just maybe because what we're going through in this time but that doesn't mean that like it doesn't exist for men too well i'll say i, lo I look at a lot of this <laughs> oh here we go joel, joel bell, bell donated thank you joel dollars Lady, only 40% of men have reproduced historically compared to 80% of women this has been proven through DNA research. A yep. quick Google search will show the studies. Most men won't reproduce. Women are by their very nature more promiscuous than men. How, like, so okay. You can't, you All right, can't so relate those things to each other. You guys so are I so ridiculous. Maybe someone should do an actual study on this and then I bring mean, us the statistics and we can come back and we, discuss like, it. Okay, so we've say. had, we've then had what? Let, let's go back to capability though, because that's a big, that's hold a up, big, wait. hold on, hold on. This is the exact opposite of female promiscuity. If 40% of men are breeding and 80% of women are, that means that it's one man and multiple women more often but, than okay, not. So. That's actually <laughs> male promiscuity. What are you talking about? That's the opposite of your point you're trying to make. That's one together. man, two women. Oh God. That's yeah, male but, promiscuity. But here, here's the difference is you could have one man who impregnates 20 women yep so you you have you could have like a top tier of men that are capable of sleeping with like a hundred women but you might have a hundred women who are more promiscuous than the average man i would say the average woman is more promiscuous than the average man simply by virtue of the fact that they are more capable that's the big thing capability is a very important component of this discussion Women yep. are more capable of being Why promiscuous. Why is that a big thing, though? Like, Doc Venabilis Hold donated one hundred. Yeah, thank you, Doc. Appreciate it. The studies are indeed confounded by access to sex. If the Capability. numbers are adjusted by number of partners per sexually active individual or individual sexual activity rate, then the few sexually active men will win the contest. Word. I feel like everybody's promiscuous. Like. Nope. No. Nope. We're all That's not true. Yeah, we're all just some freaks. <laughs> And unfortunately, also, that mean, well, unfortunately, really, our society I'm, has created that narrative, though. Right. I'm just like generalizing here, but like ev I'm just saying, like everybody is different. Like we're just I'm just still confused where this argument is going. Of like, well, we're having a conversation about 